Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, from wherever you are following us. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm sorry for the for the delay. Um, you know, we are in Argentina, I know, and we uh, we have some technical issues, but still at the same time, we are considering having this uh, cultural thing of, of, of five, 10 minute uh, allowance in, the, you know, in, in our culture. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today in another Australia Group webinar. My name is uh, Juan Cortez, and I'm the destination leader for Argentina and, and Uruguay uh, at Australia Group. Um, next to me is uh, Mr. Ivan Ordonez, uh, who will be our speaker today. But before we start, let me tell you a little bit about Australia Group. Um, we organize um, tailor-made high-quality academic trips for universities for, from uh, all around the world. Uh, coming to Latin America and North America. And we mostly work with two different uh, types of trips. Uh, one is the uh, active learning, where students get to work uh, on consulting projects um, with different companies or uh, social organizations in all the destinations that, that we operate. And, and we have also our traditional programs where we organize trips uh, where the students get to meet with business leaders, politicians, and learn more about the business and uh, political environment in, um, in all the destinations. So let's start now with, uh, with our webinar. Um, just for you to know, in case you have to leave uh, early uh, and, and you are not able to uh, stay until the end, this webinar is being recorded and you will be receiving uh, an email with the links, uh, and, and you can watch it later. And and also uh, on the chat box uh, that it's in your uh, in your right uh, side of the screen, there will be a uh, space for for questions and also for some. If you wanna um, have some comments, uh, will be answered uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, let's start now. Today with us we have uh, Ivan Ordonez. He's an economist and specialized in, in agribusiness. He completed his um, academic uh, education at the Universidad de Buenos Aires and also at Universidad de Tela. And he has been uh, working in, uh, in different, uh, actually he worked for different management consulting companies uh, in the past years. He also worked for uh, Grupo, Grupo Los Grobo and since 2013, he runs his uh, own um, consulting firms called E plus E Consultores, where he advises, uh, give advice to uh, agricultural companies in the USA and in Argentina. So I will now take, uh, let Ivan uh, take the lead, and and if you have any questions, please post them uh, on the on the chat box, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. So thank you. Thank you, Juan Cruz, for your warm, warm introduction. And uh, now we're going to uh, have the opportunity to talk about Argentina as a supermarket of the world. Uh, Argentina uh, basically has uh, a wide range of exports, but its key exports are related to agribusiness. So this is one of our uh, main competitive advantages uh, for global insertion. So. Which are the key characteristics of Argentina as a supermarket to the world? Well, basically, we are a food powerhouse. We have exceptional natural resources um, that are combined with energy resources, both oil and gas and renewables. And also, we have a highly trained workforce. We have a, a, a very good level of secondary school and university degree coverage, particularly in the farming world, in the agribusiness world. So our aim as a country is to move forward from a barn of the world to a supermarket of the world. And what's the difference between the barn and the supermarket? Well, basically, it's the knowledge per hectare and per kilo of product produced. We want to add more knowledge to, to our production system and to the output of our production system. And that aim, that goal, is shared by our current president, Mauricio Macri, and he's fostering uh, um, a new way of global insertion by improving our trade deals around the world. As you can see, Argentina is 
the sixth largest agricultural nation in the world in terms of acreage and the fifth largest um, agricultural nation in terms of grain production. Our most important grain production are oil seeds, particularly soybean, and we also produce 32% of our acreage is dedicated uh, to cereals, particularly corn and wheat. As you can tell from the graph, um, our, our productivity, our yield is very high, comparable to the one in the United States. China and India are also very important agribusiness nations, but they lack production to feed their own population. And there is where Argentina kicks in. But Argentina is not only about soybeans. We are also the largest exporter of fresh and industrialized lemon and pears. We are top three exporters of corn, wheat, peanuts, garlic, and we are also top five in beef, shrimp, wine, apple, uh, olives, and olive oil, and blueberries. Those are some, only some of the products we lead in exports. And we are hoping that in the next five years, we can diversify more our export matrix, not only in the agribusiness sector, but also um, in knowledge-based uh, services. Uh, so we are confident that being a supermarket to the world is not only about products, but it's also about services. As you can see, uh, this is our, uh, our export matrix. 60% uh, of our exports comes from the agribusiness world. Um, and one out of $3 um, are, are exported from the uh, soybean complex. That it's not only soybean as a grain, but also soybean oil, soybean oil and, and soybean meal. Soybean meal is a crucial um, component of any uh, cattle farm. For example, uh, cattle itself, uh, cows, uh, pork, chicken, and also aquaculture. Most of our exports go to China. 30% of our, our soybean exports go to China um, as a raw grain. But 70% of our soybean export go to other regions of the world, mainly Europe. Uh, we, we export uh, soybean meal to Europe that is used to feed the porks uh, and dairy industry of the European Union. And we export soybean oil to other Latin American nations and mainly to India. Indians use soybean oil as a, as a key ingredient of their diet. They use it to cook, uh, to fry uh, different, different types of food. But also, we are, uh, as I told you before, we are very important in cereal and byproducts, animal proteins that not only include uh, beef, but also include uh, dairy products and um, uh, uh, and fish, and we are also very important in the in the global food market with wine, etc. As I told you before, there there is a um, there is a key challenge that is to improve our our exports of the rest of the agribusiness complex, mainly inputs. I'm talking about fertilizers and agricultural machinery. Those are um, some of the products that we use in our farms and we are per, uh, improving and can can eventually be competitive uh, in the world just to show you uh, how our, our agricultural area has increased in the previous uh, years uh, we have the acreage zone in 19, 1990 which is about uh, 16 to 17 million hectares. An hectare is roughly two acres, uh, just for you to have a, a conversion idea. Uh, and before the introduction of genetically modified soybean, uh, our, our, our crop portfolio was basically even, as you can tell from the graph, 30% uh, soybean, 21% corn, 30% wheat, and other uh, uh, year crops uh, for 20 percent as well in the year 1985 the introduction of genetically modified 
soybean happened and it changed the matrix of, of, of the production as you can tell for the year 2000 uh, and 2001 and soybean began to grow in its participation but after the 2001 crisis and the um, and the taxing of grain exports uh, it was more convenient to uh, grow uh, soybeans so the share of the soybean crop increased significantly uh, till it reached its 50 percent uh, of our of our um, of our acreage now this is uh, changing we have a new trend because the current government that it's more market friendly and it uh, aims to boost exports have taken away most of the of the export taxes and have uh, lifted all the bans on exports in the previous government we used to ban the export of wheat corn dairy and beef and all those bans were lifted by mauricio's macris government so now the acreage for soybean is being reduced because the farmers are more incentivized to 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 grow other products such as corn wheat and allocate more area to cattle most of our cattle uh, grows in pasture land now farming is not only about natural resources to be a competitive farmer in, in the global environment you need a lot of education and you need young farmers and as you can see um our average age for farmers is more than 10 years below the American farmer. It is highly educated, 43% of them have a college degree, um, and it's very prone to hire uh, an independent agri uh, uh, agronomical advisor. The role of the agronomical advisor is to help the, the farmer to achieve uh, record uh, production levels so that is a key characteristic of the of the farmer in Argentina that is not shared around the United States Brazil and Australia the, the institution of the independent agricultural advisor is key for the system to work also the the Argentine farmer relies heavily on contractors the Argentine farmer typically doesn't own a combine the argentine farmer typically doesn't own land the typical argentine farmer doesn't own a pulverizing machine or a sewing machine so how does he does farming well he relies heavily on contractors and he um he he rents uh, he contracts the service of sewing he's not only leasing the machine he's also uh, paying for a for a worker to do the job and he doesn't own the land therefore he rents the land where agriculture happens around between 60 to 70 percent of our agricultural area is leased area so this is key for the system to work last but not least is its close relation with investors and the banking system in the united states the farmer typically have loans with the banking system but in Argentina, we not only have loans with the banking system, but we also have loans with the agricultural input companies, and we also have loans with independent investors. Sometimes the wealthy doctor of the local town, the wealthy lawyer, um, the wealthy accountant, the wealthy professionals of these local rural communities are also investors in the farm operation of a, of a particular farmer. And when the operations grow, grows bigger, um, larger investors within larger cities such as Buenos Aires, Córdoba and Rosario, which are the three uh, most important uh, cities in Buenos Aires, they also uh, have potential investors in the farming operations. Apart from what, what is happening inside the farm, we have a very important innovation environment. Uh, this innovation environment comprises all the key global players for agricultural machinery and agricultural inputs. All the key companies developing uh, technology for the farming world participate in the Argentine uh, farming business. I'm talking about Monsanto, Syngenta, uh, uh, Bungie, uh, 
um, uh, you name it, we have it. Uh, uh, APCO, uh, John Deere, uh, any company that is developing either machinery or inputs is present in, in the in the agribusiness Argentina ecosystem. But not only that, we have two technical associations that are crucial for not only generating but also um, sparsing uh, knowledge. Sparsing. Hello, are, are you listening to me okay? Yeah, we're back. We're back? Yes. Good, good. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Uh, as I was saying, um, one of the crucial issues here at the, um, at the business environment is the innovation environment. Uh, I told you that we have most of the relevant agribusiness companies in the, group, in the world participating in our agribusiness uh, market, but one of the key issues that differentiate Argentinian farming from Brazilian and American farming is that we have two very, very large technical associations. About 5,000 members uh, join CREA and APRECID. 5,000 is 10% of the total farmers, but these 5,000 farmers are also the largest farmers. So I would say that roughly 50% of our uh, crop area um, um 50 percent of our crop area uh, is a member of these two technical associations and these two technical associations are very important for generating a knowledge to help uh, lower the risk aversion to adopt new technologies and also help the diffusion of the knowledge and the technologies to be faster aside this we have the INTA which is the National Agriculture Technology Institute that research and spread knowledge. So, uh, in order to, to sum up our key challenges to not only be the, the barn of the world, but to be the supermarket of the world. We have a lot of issues revolving infrastructure and environment. Some are collective. For example, improve our highways and roads, reactivate our key railroads, build canals and irrigation systems, improve tele telecommunications, but also improve social infrastructure in rural communities. Social infrastructure in rural communities is crucial, and I'm not talking about only about health and education, but also entertainment to make the rural communities thrive and be attractive to people. In the individual aspect, um, we not only have to act good, we have to look good in order to uh, acquire the social license to operate. If the people in the cities is suspicious about how food is produced, they will revoke our social license to produce. Also, the financial system plays a crucial role. We need to improve um, the banking uh, credit, not, not only to link the credit to collaterals, but also to link the credit to risk levels. It's something very difficult to explain in such short time, but believe me, it's very important. We also need to increase investors' participation in the business. 
Therefore, we need to generate financial vehicles that allow these investors to operate in the farming business. And, but not only that, we also have to improve our auditing systems for the investors to be safe and sound when they deposit their money in the agribusiness world. And finally, we need to develop uh, a stronger insurance marker, market in order to mitigate the impact of massive climatological events. I'm talking about droughts and floods. We don't have an insurance system for climatological events such as the one the American have. So every 10 years when we have a climatological crisis, many farmers go bankrupt. So we need to improve this. Finally, we have to pay a lot of attention to our overall value proposition. We need to improve internal markets in order to transparent the uh, price formation process. We also need to standardize the quality of the products we produce in order to uh, help our product segmentation and therefore capture the premium segments of the market uh, and not be focused on, uh, on, on price markets such as Russia, such as China, such as Africa. We need to go to the premium markets such as Europe. Uh, we need to diversify and increase our revenue streams. And I'm talking about services such as tourism or new uh, product lines such as renewable energy. Now, a lot of farms are adopting windmills that generate uh, electricity for the power grid or are generating um, energy out of cow manure. That, that is right now a kind of a pilot. So we need to improve that, capitalize it and spread it around farms. And finally, to be a supermarket of the world is only not to provide products that you can find in your supermarket, but also to improve our production techniques and also sell that knowledge to the world. I'm talking about Internet of Things applied to agriculture, biotech, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, basically, this is uh, most of what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I am happy to answer some questions. So thank you very much, Ivan, for this presentation and for uh, your summary. Uh, we know that we can be here talking for a long time, but um so let's open up now for for questions as i said on the chat box uh, uh, chat box you can uh, ask your questions uh, there and ivan will be glad to um to answer um so let's start with the first question it's from frank thank you for your uh, question frank and it says how will trade disagreement between usa and china uh, which affects soybeans uh, in terms affects argentina well um it, it is very difficult to um, to assess what is going to be the outcome of this trade uh, war between the United States and China. Um, uh, we don't really know how the how this trade war will evolve. Um, right now, uh, we are experience we are experiencing a severe drought, a very very strong and severe drought. We have lost nearly 30% of our, of our soybean production. Therefore, it is very hard for us in this particular context to take advantage between the trade conflict between China and the United States. Also, as I told you before, 70% of our, of our soybean is already exported and compromised to Europe. And when we export to Europe, we are not exporting raw grain. We are exporting flour meal and, oil, uh, and soybean oil. So for us, Europe is a better customer than China. Uh, um, it will be a matter of how the traders, Bangi, Cargill, uh, Noble, um, 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 all these trading houses that operate in Argentina, for example, ADM does not operate in Argentina. So all these trading house, houses will relocate their trading. They might be willing to take some price advantage if China is willing to pay for it. But as I told you before, we are still experiencing a severe drought. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Um, we have another question uh, from Giselle. 
And it says that you mentioned your, uh, the associations in Argentina are able to mitigate technology aversion with the farmers. And could you please provide some examples of challenges that uh, Brazil, for example, is suffering, uh, but, but are not suffering in Argentina? Yes. Uh, well, um, the, the business cycle of farming is very complex. You do things only once a year. For example, you sow only once a year uh, soybean. So uh, you have a lot of uh, risk aversion when introducing new techniques. These technical associations create a collective group that uh, validates technology and gives a lot of security to the farmer that this technology is good. One particular example is direct seeding. Uh, when, when direct seeding was introduced in the early 90s, it only took four years, only took four years to reach 90% of the total area zone. In Brazil, they are uh, about to reach that number um, uh, last year. So we, uh, the, the diffusion of that technology was at least five five times more, more fast, uh, five times faster in Argentina than in Brazil, thanks to these types of associations that give this collective uh, net that allows farmers to be more, um, be more comfortable adopting new technology. Thank you, Ivan. We got another question from, uh, from Bob that says, why steer away from Africa where the food is needed the most? Well, uh, the problem, um, uh, globally speaking, the problem with uh, the food markets is not a problem of supply, but it's a problem of demand, typically. Um, uh, sadly, uh, the African continent has a very low income, and therefore, it is very difficult for them to pay for the food. But we are the largest exporter of wheat to Egypt, for example, and, 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 and we are developing uh, some uh, some beef cuts, uh, not, not developing. We are already trading some, exporting some beef cuts to particular countries in, in Africa. But it, it is very difficult uh, to 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 access the African market because mainly uh, they lack the, the 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 income to pay for the food. Okay, thank you. Um, I have uh, another question that is related to Argentina and in terms of disruptive technologies that mm -hmm. are applying to uh, to the agribusiness. Which are the, the, the technologies that are being developed? Well, Argentina leads in, in, in many aspects of, of farming technology. One of these is, as I told you before, direct, direct sowing. Uh, we are the uh, country with the largest area in direct sowing in the entire planet. Direct sowing is crucial because it helps us to reduce erosion, so soil erosion. So um, the, the implementation of, of direct seeding is very important, not only because uh, it increases yields, but it also protects natural resources. Other area in which we are leading is in the developing of new seed varieties and the introduction of biotechnology. There are only six countries in the entire planet that have produced uh, commercial biotechnological events for vegetables. Argentina is one of those six countries. We have developed wheat and soybean with higher tolerance to the drought phenomena. And last but not least, we are also leading in everything related to internet, internet of things and farming. Uh, we have at least five companies that are thriving uh, and are developing products using Internet of Things and, and satellite images uh, processing. Uh, so we are very confident that in this new wave of technology in the farming world, we are going to be uh, in the crest of the wave. Thank you. And then one last question. It says, if the contractor owns the tractors, the combines and planters, how does this affect the farm equipment market in, Ar in Argentina? Well, Frank, this is a very interesting question. The, the, the farm machinery market in the United States, uh, it's a very important one. Uh, most of the, of the government subsidies 
to the farmers. It's being, uh, at the end, invested by the farmer in machinery. So what I would tell you is that uh, we, um, we, we are more efficient in the use of capital. Let me explain. Um, uh, with the same machine, the Argentine farmer tends five times more area than the American farmer. With only one machine, five times more area than the American farmer, than the average American farmer. And also, we tend to use um, uh, older machines. The, the age of our, of our combines, of our, of our uh, sewing and pulverizing equipment is quite a little bit more, uh, quite a little bit older than the American one. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your participation. Thank you, Ivan, uh, for this presentation. Uh, we have some other questions or, or, or comments that we will answer uh, separately, and some uh, we will, uh, Luis, we will answer your uh, by email and all the possibilities that the students will have in, in Buenos Aires related to agribusiness. Um, and we will also send you Ivan's email, so if you want to be in touch directly and get more information. Uh, he will be glad to uh, to answer all your, your questions. Uh, thanks again uh, and for for being there. And uh, we're looking forward to having you in, in our next webinar that you will hear soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Bye bye.